Okay. Hello. Uh, can any, any, everybody hear me? Yes, I think so. Um, we are Moco and Zax from Germany, and we are here to show you a talk on how to make your own variable color organ dress. So, and what's a color organ dress? Uh, you can see it here, or you can see it here. Please, sound. I'll sl start the slide again, I guess. What do I have to press? All right, that's a color organ basically, yeah. and we brought we you something. Made a simple version, which we were going to give around, so you can have a look at the uh, actual. You can have a look at, at the circuit. Well, what's my motivation behind doing this? Um, basically, basically, I like sewing, and I've always wanted to use variable LEDs in a project. And there's some inspiration to be found on the web. For example, this Amplitai from Adafruit. And um, I'm a big fan of Spoonflower, where you can buy custom printed fabric, where this design by Kimza named Circuit Nerd is one of my favorites, as you can see. Sadly, I've only limited programming skills, so, well, that's where you come in. Yeah, yeah so um, I like electronics, and uh, of course I always wanted to make some project with very real LEDs. And, uh, well, there are some uh, Mac controllers on the web. Uh, on the left side you see uh, uh, Adafruit Gamma, on the right side an Adafruit Floor. And, um, well, my issue was that I didn't really have any practical use case. And, uh, well, that's kind of where we come together. <laughs> okay, so what do you need for sewing? You need your standard sewing utensils like scissors, a pattern, fabric, etc. Make sure you choose a fabric that's appropriate for your project. Like, if you want to make a dress, you should choose something stretchy. Um, I recommend for sewing with conductive thread, which you need for the LEDs to connect, to use embroidery needles and you want multiple needle threaders because they break easily, because the um, conductive thread is more like wire and splices easily and is not easily threaded by hand. You'll need cutting pliers for that too, not regular scissors. Um, as I said, conductive thread and you need the electronics like the microcontroller, the LED, the battery. I used a commercial pattern for the dress. It's McCall's pattern M6028. Um, as with all, with all patterns, you have to check the fit and probably make some slight alterations. But all in all, it's a very easy pattern to use and I can recommend it. On the right side of the slide, you see how this dress looks before assembling, but um, there's already the front and the side panels sewn together. Yes, um, I use an overlock for sewing. On this slide, you can see a basic circuit uh, connecting a microcontroller and a NeoPixel LED. Um, there are three kinds of connections, power, ground, and data. Data goes from the first, uh, from the data port to the first LED, then from the LED to the next LED, and so on. on. And it's important that you uh, connect them in the right direction as indicated by the arrows on the LED. If you are planning to have a more complex LED pattern, I recommend that you use an embroidery frame, as you can see in the slide, in which you mount the fabric. This is especially important because otherwise the tension might skew your garment. Um, when placing the LEDs, be aware of the data direction and avoid crossing the circuits. As, as much as possible, otherwise there will be crosstalk. I also recommend that you pin the LEDs in place before sewing them on, for example, with scotch tape, which I used. If you want to make a variable dress, I recommend that you add layers for the different circuits, power, ground, and data. On the left, you can see my first try with variable LEDs, which had a bigger chance for crosstalk, as you can see in the upper left, maybe, where the wires are crossing, resulting in randomly flickering LEDs. On the right, you can see my second version with three different layers, one for data, one in between to segregate the circuits, and one for power ground, which is not optimal yet, but uh, still better than the first. On the left, um, I used as fabric performance knit, and on the right, you see modern jersey. Last but not least, uh, don't forget you need to power your dress. You need to add a battery pouch. Okay. 
So uh, basically, we, we uh, had two microcontroller options uh, that I showed earlier. Um, one was the Adafruit Gamma and the other one was the Adafruit Fluor. They are both fairly cheap and both made to be uh, sued onto uh, something you, well, where you actually have to sue and not solder. Um, the thing is that they both are very, very short on, on flash and power, so if you're trying to do any more advanced projects, it's probably an, an issue. So um, just for, for um, scale, the, the sketch that is running on this uh, uh, project right now uh, has uh, well, used up like 90% of the, of the flash of the uh, gamma. So for the LEDs, we uh, chose the Adafruit uh, RGB Smart NeoPixels, which is a NeoPixel variant that uh, is suitable. Um, as with all NeoPixels, it's easily addressable with uh, the libraries that uh, are provided. Um, you can power it with 5 to 9 volts. Um, but you can also power it with 3.3 volts, what, uh, what we are doing, actually. Uh, they'll be a bit less bright, but still bright enough. Um, and they are, well, somewhat pricey. You can buy a sheet with uh, 20 pieces for around uh, 35 bucks. And uh, you still have to do some work on it, so you have to clip the sides with a wire cutter, then peel them off so you have the sides off, and then after that you basically try to break off the LEDs in a, a diagonal uh, pattern. So, and after you, you um, have them uh, well separated, they still have some leftover grating from the PCB which you want to file off so it doesn't get stuck in your uh, thread. Okay, for programming, uh, you use the standard Arduino IDE, which probably by now everybody has uh, seen <laughs> once or twice at least. Um, there are uh, standard libraries provided for uh, all the uh, microcontrollers that we have shown and the NeoPixels. And um, in, uh, if you actually try to address the LEDs, they of course have an, uh, an index position starting with zero uh, according to how you wire them up. So the first LED that you wire up is always uh, on index zero and the next one is index one and so on. Um, and if you have, have a complex pattern or something like this where you want uh, the top uh, to be addressed as a single virtual pixel group, um, you have to actually do some uh, mapping in software. So basically, um, if you have an uh, arrangement for your LEDs, uh, you can probably uh, address them uh, from, from the library like this. So it starts at the top with zero and then goes on in the direction they are actually uh, well connected to each other, but uh, what we need for, for this kind of project is uh, something like that. So what we're actually going to do is uh, we um, will have a, um, an array for the LEDs um, where we just assume that every LED group can have up to five LEDs and just uh, well enter the, the real IDs of the LEDs in there. And um, then in the uh, have a, we have function to uh, assign a color to a given LED group, which just cycles through those uh, arrays and um, well, sets all the uh, single LEDs to a certain color. Um, having that already as a function is quite nice because uh, after you got that, you can uh, just uh, well use many standard animations that are already out there if you don't have an external trigger. Okay, so for, for our project, we actually have an external trigger, which is um, the microphone. So um, we found the, the Maxim Max uh, 4466 is uh, well, a microphone that's easy to, to integrate and cheap. Um, as I've said before, the uh, Gamma has very limited flash, so doing a real uh, Fourier transformation is sadly not possible in the space we had. So we are going with the simple uh, voltage that the uh, output port of the microphone provides. So, and uh, well, the, the only well, interesting thing there is that the output has a DC bias of half the power you put in. So if you actually connect it, uh, connect it to 3.3 volts like we do, uh, and there is uh, no sound at all, uh, you will still have 1.65 uh, volts uh, on the port. So basically, you configure it as an uh, analog read on your uh, Arduino, and uh, that would be around uh, 512 to 1024. Which uh, corresponds directly to the to the input voltage given from uh, from the microphone, and after that you uh, well remove the uh, the input bias by just subtracting 512, and um, 
After that, we also um, check for noise constants, which we set to ten, uh, 10, because we found out that the microphone tends to well measure itself if it's totally quiet, so we just subtract 10. And if it's uh, less than 10, we just uh, return zero. So it doesn't flicker too much if it's quiet. Um, well, and after that, you actually uh, have to figure out how um, well uh, how uh, deep the levels should uh, well be turned on. So we have some height variable which we later use to uh, um, well turn off the the, sin the single LED groups in order. So basically, if you have uh, ten LED groups and the height variable is ten, all the LEDs will be on. And if you have something like two or three, they will be only the first two or three rows on. So probably this is confusing. So um, yeah. So uh, if it's too confusing, I have uh, like two s quick examples where we just uh, assume a maximum volume. So um, for a maximum volume, the output voltage of the microphone will be 3.3 volts. So that will convert to uh, 1024. Then we will subtract the 512. So we, uh, our result will be 512, and then we retract another 10 because, uh, yeah, it's uh, above the, the noise threshold. And uh, then we picked an arbitrary number, uh, 42, of course, um, that results in some, well, actually uh, in 12, which is uh, more uh, LED groups than we have here. But uh, as we are never going to hit a maximum volume, that's probably uh, a good choice. Um, we can do that again with uh, low volume, which, uh, well, we're just uh, going with 623. Again, we are subtracting the uh, 512 uh, input bias, um, which is us with 108, uh, 101, 100, yeah, whatever, you know. Um, and then at the end, we have 101. Um, and still, we, when we do the division, um, we see that only the first two LED groups would have been, uh, would have been activated by this, so this looks uh, yeah, like it should work with 20, uh, 42. Um, if you think that the uh, sensitivity is low because maybe you, you're in a quiet room and what you want to see, uh, see more flicking, you can just decrease uh, the sensitivity variable, so you will uh, end up with more, um, yeah, more, more color. <laughs> Okay, um, in the end, we're not just turning the LEDs on and off, but we're uh, putting a well, pretty standard uh, rainbow color wheel effect uh, on them, which well, uh, is so standard that I won't go into it, because uh, you get it with the standard examples with the library. Um, and you have to make sure that uh, there's some kind of fading out, so if you just turn off the LEDs uh, that they aren't used anymore, it will look very, very annoying because it's very flashy then. So what we're doing here is we're slowly fading those out that are not in, uh, needed anymore. Okay, and then basically you're done. Yeah, what were the lessons learned um, du during yeah, the second dress of this form already? Um, what's your fabric choice? Um, in my first version, I had runs on the fabric, probably because I used the wrong needles. Um, you need to watch out if you want to sew jersey you best use jersey needles ballpoint needles um, also that conductive thread is very rough and may harm sensible fabrics um, there will be crosstalk if you move or if your hair falls over the circuits I haven't found a way yet to change that uh, conductive thread is more wire than string, therefore you'll need to fixate it in other ways than you would do with regular string. We tried to solder it, that it doesn't work, but you can hot glue it. Um, yeah, and uh, if you don't fix it, you'll lose connectivity, the circuits will get loose and f debugging that is really not fun. Um, yeah, and if you go to a party in a dress like this, then you might get many annoyed drunks because they obviously don't like really bright LEDs. Yeah, and as said multiple times already, maybe try not uh, the Gamma for a larger project, but maybe a Flora or something similar because the tiny storage is an annoyment to the programmer. All right, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, we were faster than expected. Um, if you want, I think we can take some questions on stage and otherwise uh, you will find us next to the stage or later at Camp Holland for questions and we'll upload the slides and some resources at the wiki later. All right, thank you.
If you have any questions, please stick your hand up and I'll bring a microphone over. Yeah. Um, two and a half questions. Um, one, how often can you wear that before it needs maintenance and uh, soldering back together again? Um, presumably you can barely pan wash that. And also, oh, that's why I asked the question. Also, um, granted you can't have um, real live FFTs in a, th you know, a thing that small. Did you think of just getting maybe three or four signals from just passive filters, you know, just loads of gaps and seeing if that would have done any good? Okay, I'll uh, start with the first question. Um, washing, um, the Adafruit website states it's machine washable, but I haven't tried because of the hot glue, actually. Um, I have uh, washed it by hand so far, and it's uh, the, the, yeah, well, breaking point has been um, the soldering part on the microphone so far. I've broken that one off once already. I think I've worn it three times so far, this variant. Um, I also added small dots of hot glue on the, um, how do you say it, ports, or on, on the uh, data and ground and power points on the electrodes as to keep the wire more tight, so to connect it better. I hope that answers the questions. Yeah, yeah the second question was uh, if um, we tried an FFT with uh, less channels than a standard FFT, like three or four channels. And the answer uh, is actually that I didn't try it because uh, I was kind of lazy. And uh, so somebody wrote an FFT library for uh, for Upmega like I don't know years ago, and it wasn't touched since then. And I, I was just uh, well, I could be bothered to load that library, but then uh, even without uh, adding any code to it, it wouldn't compile anymore because uh, well, it would be too large for the 8K flash. So that's kind of where it left off. Well, rather than just FFTing, just having just completely passive analog filters, just sorry, doing it the not with not with an FFT algorithm at all, but just with having analog filters completely passive and just having three signals coming in. I just wonder if that was doable. Yeah, that should be possible, but uh, well, it kind of kind of uh, doesn't work with the microphone then. Okay, any more questions? Okay. Okay, thank you very much, guys.